Welcome to Season 16 of Classical Music Discoveries. This is your hostess, Sandy Hedgecock. Thank you for joining our happy listeners throughout the world. Classical Music Discoveries is brought to you by La Musica International Chamber Music Festival. Be sure to visit their website for more information on their internationally famous chamber music festival in Sarasota, Florida. Visit their website at lamusicafestival.org. For complete information on how to submit your music for airplay, to advertise on our show, or to visit our online music store, please visit our auxiliary website at classicalmusicdiscoveries.store for complete information. Please don't forget to like the broadcast you are listening to so the composer and musicians know you like their musical contribution. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive notifications of every new broadcast we post. The story of the Pearl Fishers by Bizet revolves around a love triangle between Zerga, the leader of a fishing village, his old friend Nadir, and the priestess Layla. Act 1 sets up this triangle as Zerga and Nadir reunite after many years and recall how their friendship had been endangered because they were both in love with an anonymous priestess. In their famous duet, they pledge to never let their friendship be threatened again. A veiled priestess arrives, and to absolutely nobody in the audience's surprise, she turns out to be the very woman that Zerga and Nadir once quarreled over. Nadir recognizes Layla by her voice, and they confess their continuing love, of course. But they are caught by the high priest Nurabad who accuses Layla of breaking her vow of chastity. Layla is unveiled and Zerga, furious at his betrayal, condemns both Layla and Nadir to death. In Act 2, Zerga questions his decision, but is further enraged when Layla confesses her love of Nadir in an attempt to save him. However, Nadir ultimately rescues them, both after discovering that Layla had at one point sheltered him from a mob. In order to facilitate their escape, he sets fire to the village as a distraction, and the opera ends rather ambiguously with Zerga awaiting the return of the villagers and his presumed punishment. Later, productions of the opera added on a final reckoning for Zerga and the hands of the villagers in order to save the story of the opera. La Musica's 34th season begins in April 2020 at the historic Sarasota Opera House. Tickets are available now on their website at lamusicafestival.org. This season also features outstanding events like Meet the Musicians, Musical Chefs, where the musicians cook dinner for you, and of course their extremely popular open rehearsals where you can watch their performances come together before the concerts. To purchase tickets and for more information, please visit La Musica's website at www.lamusicafestival.org. Act 1 the opera opens with a chorus scene of fishermen and village women that sets the scene for the entire opera, referencing a fiery beach, black-eyed girls, and superstitious belief systems. The music here is an excellent example of the Orientalist style associated with non-European primitives in the 19th century, beginning with a bagpipish open fist drone and a dance rhythm on the tambourine. It also reminds us of a little of the natives' music from the 1933 film King Kong, just one example of the longevity of this musical idiom. 
Zerga interrupts the dancing and notes that they need to choose a leader, and he is pleasantly surprised when they choose, of course, him. In the next scene, the deer arrives and is introduced as the long-lost friend of Zerga. He recounts his time in the wilderness, and he and Zerga reminisce a little, although they recount that their relationship had been strained at one point because they were both in love with the same beautiful woman. In the famous duet, A Fond du Temple Saint, they recount seeing her and note that even now the thought of her drives them apart. So they pledge to eternally remain friends. I wonder how long that will last. The chorus repeats their opening number at mid-much celebrating. These two scenes are also an excellent example of the ways in which the pearl fishers adhered to the schemas and frameworks of operas in the time period. It was standard practice to begin an opera with a chorus dance number, followed by a dialogue between a soloist and the crowd, the introduction of the hero and other characters, and ending with a reprise of the opening chorus. Of course, these schemas became standardized because they were highly effective and efficient means to a dramatic end, especially if time was of the essence during the writing process. However, composers and librettists had to tread carefully lest their work become too cookie-cutter as a result. Continuing on, Zerga then sees a boat arriving and states that it must be an anonymous priestess, don't they wish? whose face no one can see, who comes from every year to provide spiritual protection to the tribe. Layla arrives and swears to remain faithful to her vows, to pray by the sea by day and night while remaining hidden behind her veil and take no friends, husbands, or lovers. In a bit of foreshadowing, Zerga threatens that the price for her betrayal would be death. Layla suddenly recognizes Nadir and is shaken up by his presence. Zerga notices her anxiety and reminds her that she could leave and be free, but she composes herself and commits to her duty. After the villagers leave, Nadir remains alone and reflects on the fact that he recognized Layla's voice. He feels as if he should have told Zerga who she was. But he is so excited to see her again in spite of his earlier vow that he sings a wonderful aria and then goes to sleep. What else? At this point, the opera has a perfect pair of vows at cross-purpose between Nadir and Leela. The fact that the conflict could have been avoided if Leila had spoken up during the initiation or if Nadir revealed his knowledge of her identity, Zerga, makes it all more poignant or frustratingly unbelievable depending on how one views the libretto. The critics at that time referred to it as frustratingly unbelievable and a libretto and music in which there are no fishermen and certainly no pearls in the music. The final scene of Act 1 finds Layla beginning her prayers at the sea with the priest Norabad and a chorus of fakirs. Nadir awakens to the sound of her voice and Layla continues with her prayer to the spirits. She briefly draws her veil aside and sees Nadir and subtly alters the final words of her prayer to now address him instead of the gods and spirits.
choisir un chef qui nous commande, qui nous protège et nous défende. Un chef aimé de tous, vigilant, courageux.
le ciel en moi. Oh, nous avons vécu séparés l'un de l'autre. La main nous réunit et les choix et la nôtre. Et parle et tu restes fidèle à ton serment. Et c'est la vie que je revois. Pour bien être être de mon amour profond, je suis me rendre maître. Oublions le passé et dans ce doux moment, soyons frères, restons amis toute la vie. Mon cœur a battu sa folie.
You are listening to Classical Music Discoveries, the most popular classical music show in the world. Would you like to listen to Classical Music Discoveries while on the road, at work, while jogging, or at play on your smartphone? It's really quite easy, and thousands of our happy listeners do it every day. Just go to your Apple or Android App Store and download the Podomatic app to your phone. Once installed, simply do a search for Classical Music Discoveries. Then click on our logo and you will instantly see all of our 90 plus shows, which you can listen to at any time, day or night. If you are short on streaming data, you can download any of our shows to your phone for convenient offline listening. Again, just visit the Apple or Android App Store and download the Podomatic app. The app is free, just like all of our shows. Now, the greatest music in the world is in the palm of your hand and is only a click away. Act 2 the second act begins with Layla and Norbed overlooking the shore. Layla underscores her faithfulness to him by telling a story of when she saved a fugitive from a mob even as her own life was threatened. She is left alone and sings an aria conveying her feelings for Nadir and her happiness at encountering him again. An oboe signals Nadir's entrance as he sings from off stage. After his entrance, Nadir and Layla confess their love for one another despite the vows that would keep them apart and promise to meet again every evening. However, when Nadir tries to sneak away, he is found out by the fisherman who had been guarding Layla's position on the rocks. The priest Norabad and the rest of the tribe vow to kill them for their treachery. Layla is terrified when Nadir remains defiant. Zerga arrives and manages to calm the situation and convinces the fishermen to be content with merely banishing the two of them. However, Norbad unveils Layla and when Zerga recognizes her, he realizes that he too has been betrayed, so he orders death for both of them. Of course, what good would an opera be if someone didn't die?
Shit! 
imitated by classical music shows throughout the world, but never equaled. You are listening to Classical Music Discoveries, the most popular classical music show in the world. Can't get enough of Classical Music Discoveries? Now you can listen to Classical Music Discoveries on your Amazon Alexa device. Just say, Alexa, play the podcast Classical Music Discoveries. Classical Music Discoveries is also available online at classicalmusicdiscoveries.com, on the Podomatic app, Podbean, Spotify, YouTube, and other podcast players. No matter where you are in the world, if you have internet access, Classical Music Discoveries is always there for you. This is made possible by our sponsors, La Musica International Chamber Music Festival and Uber. Act 3. In Act 3, we find Zerga torn over the fact that he has condemned his friend to death and regretting his rash decision to have them both, Layla and Nadir, killed. Layla interrupts his soliloquy and implores him to spare Nadir and only execute Layla. But her demonstration of love for Nadir only further enrages Zerga. However, as she is being taken away for execution, she gives her necklace to a young fisherman and Zerga recognizes that she was the woman who had saved him many years ago. The second half of Act 3 centers around the funeral pyre on which Nadir and Layla are to be executed. A crowd of villagers surrounds the pyre and sings in their thirst for blood and vengeance. Suddenly the rear of the scene is lit by a red light and Zerga arrives carrying an axe and tells the villagers that the village is on fire and they should run and save their children. All of the villagers leave except for Zerga, Nadir, and Layla, and of course the priest Nurabad, who hides in order to see what transpires. Zerga confesses to Nadir and Layla that he lit the fire in the village and releases them, at which point Nurabad dashes off to warn the villagers. The three sing an almost oddly jubilant trio, given the fact that they aren't out of danger yet and still in danger of being killed especially for Zerga. The original version of the opera apparently ended with this scene, or with Zerga sending them away as he awaits his fate. However, to have one of the major characters' fates left so ambiguous was highly irregular, so in the late 19th century, revivals of the Pearl Fishers altered the ending to include Zerga's death in order to satisfy the conventional demand for closure and a bloodthirsty audience. In the extended finale of this performance, Nurabad returns with some villagers and denounces Zerga. Zerga fights with the villagers, but is stabbed and left for dead. As he is dying, he bids farewell to Layla while she and Nadir sing from afar of their newfound happiness. Oh, no. 
mon âme oppressée n'a plus qu'une pensée, la vie.
Classical Music Discoveries is proud to announce our new Donizetti Opera Sponsorship Program. As you know, our operas are heard by millions of classical music listeners the world over. As a sponsor of our Donizetti Opera series, your promo will be heard in every Donizetti Opera broadcast, and you will be announced at the top of every broadcast as a sponsor of this opera series. A new Donizetti Opera will be posted each month, and this project will continue for the next three years. Each opera will remain online for at least one year. Here is how the program works. We have only five sponsorships available for this series. For every sponsorship, your promo will play once in every Donizetti Opera broadcast for the next three seasons. If you would like two or more of your promos played in a broadcast, all you need to do is purchase two or more sponsorships. A single sponsorship sells for only $100 USD, which means that a single penny will reach over 1,000 of our listeners, which is the most affordable advertising of any kind that you will find anywhere. To start your sponsorship, please visit classicalmusicdiscoveries.store and click on the Advertising tab. By Classical Music Discoveries. Any reproduction of this show without the express written permission of Classical Music Discoveries is strictly prohibited. You may request authorization by emailing us at ken at classicalmusicdiscoveries.com. We would like to thank you for listening to our show. For more information on how to submit your music to our show for airplay, or if you would like to advertise to our international audience, please visit our auxiliary website at classicalmusicdiscoveries.store.